Hello and welcome to Cargo Masterminds presented by Cargo One. My name is Reggie John and you are watching Cargo Masterminds presented by Cargo One. This is our weekly episode where we bring leaders from global aviation and logistic companies for a one-to-one -one conversation. According to a latest update from Seabury Consulting, an Accenture company, wide body passenger belly capacity from the UK to the US increased more than 21% since the US lifted international travel bans. The report says, the UK was the only country to show significant growth of transatlantic wide body belly air cargo capacity. IAG Cargo, headquartered in London, is a leading global air cargo carrier that combines the cargo businesses of five airlines under the IAG group. It combines the strength of British Airways, Iberia, Aer Lingus, Vueling, and Level. My guest today is Naomi Robinson. Head of Business Management at IAG Cargo. Naomi joined IAG Cargo in 2014 as a route analyst in the revenue management department, driving the commercial performance of flights to New York, Washington, Philadelphia, Boston, and Newark. She is now the head of business management at IAG Cargo and constantly on the lookout for macro trends affecting the air cargo industry with a strategic focus on increasing cargo business for the IAG group. Naomi Robinson joins me to discuss how she leads her team to adapt constantly to customer needs and what it means to her and to IAG Cargo to navigate through the pandemic that just refuses to leave its grip on human society even after two years. Naomi, welcome to Cargo Masterminds. Such a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Well, thank you so much. Honored to be invited. Thank you. Naomi, let's begin with the financial numbers announced for the third quarter, ending 30th September 2021. Revenues of 405 million pounds uh, for the quarter. Total revenue to date uh, of uh, 1,174 million pounds in 2021. What are the factors that you like to pick as reasons for such performance under very challenging circumstances? The quarter's success was really off the back of sustained recovery in the number of flights that IAG Cargo were able to offer to our customers. I think this it's really reflective of the increase in global trade, the economies and countries that began to recover off the back of the pandemic. During Q3, we saw many routes restart, the likes of Nairobi, Chennai, Mali, Istanbul, Denver, to name a few, and as well as increased frequency on other routes, it was IAG Cargo's fast, reliable and ultimately global service that was in really high demand from our customers. As I said in the in the introduction, uh, the transatlantic traffic is really picking up and uh, connecting UK, Europe with the US, which was opened uh, in early November or first week of number, November. What is the level of momentum you see in volume and business on your network uh, with additional frequencies and flights? 
Yeah, absolutely. So it's from the 8th of November that IAG Cargo customers had the ability to access even more capacity to the US. It's just fantastic news. So increased frequency on the likes of New York, Miami, Los Angeles, Austin, as well as route restarts on Newark and then more recently on the 15th of November, Las Vegas. So it's been a great month for the increased capacity to the US. Can you tell us some of the important additional frequencies and destination that you have added uh, for the peak season across Europe and Europe to the US? Yes, indeed. So like I just mentioned, we've increased the capacity to the US. So it means we're now operating to 21 different US destinations. And to complement that, we've also introduced wide body capacity within Europe to feed into our main hubs of London Heathrow, Madrid and Dublin. So we're now operating, for example, an A380 between London and Frankfurt. Frankfurt, of course, being a, a key automotive hub um, along with this A380 operating London Frankfurt London on a daily basis we similarly also have a daily London Madrid London also wide body these routes would traditionally be operated by an A320 so this A380 is giving our customers much more capacity that they they need so an additional nine pallets and 30 tons per flight on average and the feedback we've had from customers has been they're absolutely loving this extra uh, capacity it's it's allowing more same day connections onto the US. These have been customers, freight, freight forwarders, for pharma, e commerce, electronic goods, and of course, pharmaceuticals as well. Now, may tell us about uh, how your cargo strategies uh, changed over the last about 21 months since the pandemic, from daily capacity vanishing literally overnight to repurposing some of your wide body passenger flights only for cargo operations. How quickly did you make decisions and how tough was to make such decisions? Yeah, what a 2021 20, month it has been, an absolute whirlwind. So uh, like you touched on in your, in your introduction, IAG Cargo works in partnership with our sister airlines and utilizes the belly hold capacity of those passenger aircraft. But of course, with the pandemic coming along and belly hold capacity withdrawing largely across the market, the, the business model really changed. So 2020 was a record year for us, thanks in large part to our really dedicated and fantastic team who responded so quickly to the pandemic. This included the setup of a comprehensive cargo only network, as well as charter operations with a dedicated charter team. We also stripped passenger seats from the aircraft to be able to develop freighters and of course relaunch different routes as, as customer demand evolved through through the months and through the pandemic. And I guess of course we we have played a, an additional part by transporting millions of doses of the COVID-19 vaccine around the world. I think reflecting on the year what I found is truly remarkable has been the speed and agility in which the team were able to adapt so that we did provide those solutions for the customers. It was, I think, November last year, we unveiled an Iberia A330 converted aircraft, and it had taken just a week for all of the seats to be removed and a further few weeks for a fully converted aircraft. And just the speed that we were able to offer these solutions is something I'm incredibly proud of. I think overall, the business adapted extremely quickly, very decisive. At the, to, the, to the various stages, I guess, that we've seen through the pandemic and over the last 21 months. Naomi, can you tell me uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, how many cargo only passenger flights uh, have you operated so far? And also how many of your white body uh, planes had their seats removed to accommodate more cargo? Yes. Yeah, so to answer your, your last question first, we we uh, we converted several aircraft over the last 20, 21 months and we have three converted aircraft as praters in operation today. Going back to your first question, in, in Q3, we did see a reduced number of cargo only rotations as, as, of course, passenger capacity and demand grew versus previous quarters. So in Q3, we saw 657 rotations versus 1,371 in in the prior quarter in Q2. So year to date, this takes us to over 3,300 and over the past 20 or so months, that's over 7,000 in total. We are still operating cargo only today. We have many from India, for example, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, uh, amongst others. 
would you be operating more of such uh, given that European Union Aviation Safety Agency extending the cargo only passenger flights till July 2022 and likely that um, FAA also would allow something similar. So would you be operating more cargo only passenger flights given that probably there is a, a faster return of wide body passenger uh, flights? Yeah, so IG Cargo is committed to supporting customers with charter charters and cargo only flying as long as customer demand is there. So like I said, at present, we do have charters and cargo only available. We've set up eight new stations across the last uh, year and a half to facilitate these and we're always willing to consider any other destinations to serve our customers so yes absolutely customers are looking for that today we're, we're here to help Normally, what are your thoughts on the current demand supply mismatch uh, and the impact it has on the on the freight rates Yes, I think global supply chains have been and the disruption pretty well documented um, and today our customers need, fast, reliable service for their must fly products, whether it's um, automotive parts for production lines or stock for the supermarket shelves or maybe mail before Christmas. It's making sure that our customer's freight gets there on time. I think also what you've probably seen in the news has been port congestion, which has led to lengthening delivery times for um, ocean freight. In addition uh, to this, the price differential between air and sea has decreased. And as IATA analysis from September shows, the price to ship on average via air versus sea is three times more expensive versus pre-pandemic levels that were over 12 and a half times. But fundamentally, our commitment to our customers is to keep the world moving and we will ensure that we deploy capacity in the right places for them. You know, in the midst of capacity constraints and increasing freight rates, um, how are you reworking your commitments to your long-term customers? It's a great question. I think throughout the pandemic, we've really tried to meet the evolving needs of our customers. And recently, we announced an extension to our leadership team with Pat Doby as Chief Customer and Infrastructure Officer and George Ephokolodis as Head of Customer Experience. I think these appointments really underline our always moving mantra, putting the customer at the heart of the business. So Pat and George will be focused on the customer end-to-end -end experience while we continue to expand uh, the network. Let's talk about your products and uh, what are some of your key focus areas? I believe it's going to be pharma, perishables, aerospace. Yes, absolutely. So, of course, pharmaceuticals have, have been have come to the fore during the, the pandemic. Um, I'm so proud of the investment that the company has made in both the product and the facilities related to our constant climate product. We've moved millions of the COVID vaccines around the world already. And these facilities not only provide that much needed quality for such product, but offer the, the capacity. It was March 19, 2019, pre-pandemic, that we opened our new facility in Madrid. This is a, a multi-million euro state-of-the-art constant climate pharmaceutical hub and its strategic location uh, being one of the largest or the largest in, in southern Europe has really helped move and played a key role in moving lots of the COVID-19 vaccines. Like you said, pharma is, is one of the key important products that we're, we're focused on along with all products but we've also additionally seen high demand for e-commerce, perishables and manufacturing goods. And our critical product, our must-fly product, has also been very popular. I think year to date, we've moved over 8,000 shipments of, of critical and it, from a generator, an emergency generator from Sweden to Jamaica, to uh, automotive tires to the US and ventilators and other emergency equipment. So all, all products are, are still in full swing and all, all getting the attention that they so deserve. And Naomi, I still want to ask one more question on the pharma, and it's because pharma is a high-yield um, commodity, cargo commodity on the air freight, uh, and it's also about... Uh, the quality and reliability of service offered that makes the difference for an airline to be a successful in this space. Uh, how are you building your pharma vertical capability so that you become a preferred cargo airline for such an important commodity by shippers from around the world? Yes, absolutely. So we're highly experienced in 
pharmaceuticals through our world leading facilities like I just mentioned in Madrid and our constant climate product has moved millions of vaccines already. I think thinking back to when the pandemic first emerged we utilised the existing resource and expertise in pharmaceuticals that, that we had at IEG Cargo to make sure we had a state of readiness to move any, any vaccines at short notice which we successfully did. And this year we've continued to play our part in the fight against the pandemic, moving test kits and people PPE, but also being a partner airline for UNICEF's humanitarian air freight initiative to support the COVAX facility. We've moved vaccines, like I said, all corners of the, the world, it seems, El Salvador, Mexico, Ireland, Canary Islands, just to name um, a few. And I, I think the investments we've made in the infrastructure really underline the business's long-term commitment to our customers and to this product, both quality, capacity and service. You know, the cargo volume coming out of cross-border e-commerce is rapidly uh, on the increase. Uh, Do you have any specific approach to take full advantage of this rapidly growing segment? Do you have something already or do you plan to launch a specific product for this particular segment? Yeah, so very timely question, I think, with Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So we're we're delighted to see the the return of more US flights and capacity as this does coincide with with the peak and with big key events, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving, and and of course, the lead up to Christmas. Um, To complement this, like we discussed earlier, we've deployed more wide body capacity in Europe so that we can serve e-commerce customers at both sides of the Atlantic. And with consumer spending and shopping online clearly here to stay, increased capacity from Asia Pack has also been deployed as we saw consumer spending accelerate around Singles Day and, and the other key events that we've, we've just discussed. And we do expect that this demand will continue for the remainder of the year in the lead up to Christmas. What is that product or category in your overall portfolio that contributes uh, most in terms of volume and value? We have a a wide product offering and carry a a huge variety of commodities across across different categories, all of which are, of course, incredibly important to us. Like I just mentioned, uh, perishables and manufacturing, we've seen large volumes of shipments of those recently. Um, We've also seen, of course, high demand for um, perishables, uh, sorry, pharmaceuticals, um, whether it be COVID related or existing pharmaceuticals that have needed transporting. So I, I think the breadth of products is, is being fully utilised today. Um, of course, different trends are seen with, depending on the time of the year, but, but all are, are equally important to us. On to another important uh, topic of discussion, and it is digital strategy and transformation. Uh, these are ongoing processes and uh, they keep evolving to meet uh, challenges. What are some of your priorities to have a robust digital infrastructure to your cargo business? Yeah, at IRG Cargo, we're always looking for ways to grow digitalization across the business model. And I think today, customers expect to be able to book their shipments anytime, anywhere. So we really foresee that digitalization across the the booking process will become much more commonplace across the sector. In terms of our digital roadmap, this is looking for us to move more towards a digital first mindset, as well as increasing our innovation and reach to remove any unnecessary time and customers, any labor intensive processes for our customers. Since you mentioned about the digital marketplaces, how important do you think are the emergence of many digital marketplaces that connect supply and demand on the air freight side uh, with easy to use uh, cloud-based API integrated platforms allowing EC listing and discovery of capacity. Yes, absolutely. So I think the cargo industry is further behind the passenger side, but the industry is absolutely accelerating. So at IAG Cargo, we're always looking at ways to improve our offering on IAGCargo.com. Through our channel, customers can make a booking in under two minutes. But like you mentioned, we've, we've partnered with other third party platforms. So customers can book with us through, through these channels. So we've partnered with Web Cargo by Freitos, IR to net rates, and our most recent partner, Cargo AI. Uh, some of our really strategic customers are also, also utilizing direct API into their own systems. And our dedicated distribution team is continually evaluating all of our channels to make sure that we can maximize customer reach and ensure a digitalized customer experience is at its best. 
you know iig cargo is a belly cargo operator of course of course in the pandemic you still have something called the freighters being operated uh, but what do you think of uh, freighters the main tech capacity and do you expect them to play a very critical role to global air freight industry even after the full belly capacity comes into play with the return of full wide body long haul passenger services yeah i think there's a lot of scope um in the air cargo industry for different approaches in making cargo work effectively like you said at iig cargo we use the belly hold capacity of our sister airlines and and that has completely pivoted through the pandemic where we've had to operate charters freighters and cargo only services in order to meet our customers needs i think looking at the market intelligence that seabury and iata from september have published it shows that freighter capacity is at 25 to 30% versus pre-pandemic levels and this is accounting for 67 to 70% of total air freight capacity. Yes, underlying all of this like with any flying is balancing the cost of operation against supply and demand. Now me my last question is uh, what is your biggest learning from the pandemics as a logistic and supply chain and air cargo leader? Well, <laughs> what a year two years it's been <laughs> um i think looking back on it the pandemic has really put cargo in the spotlight like never before it has highlighted to everyone the majorly important role that air cargo plays in ensuring that essential supplies do keep moving and are are transported across the world and when the unexpected happened last march from the outset it was so important for us to remain flexible and agile and we committed to our customers to ensure we could keep moving their goods as as they needed and i think great teamwork iig cargo played a massive part the team were and continue to be utterly exceptional and what was key was the continuous communication with the customers so we could quickly adapt our strategy from the outset and continue to evolve this as needs and demands changed and i think these solutions that we were able to deliver was essentially what allowed us to keep the world's goods moving despite lockdowns and border closures and restrictions that we've all been part of over the last 2 years naomi it was such a delight to have this conversation with you and uh, thanks for your time oh well, thank you thank you for having me That was Naomi Robinson, head of business management at IAG Cargo. I hope you enjoyed watching this interview. If you like what we do, please do share it among your network. Also, if you are not a subscriber of our YouTube channel, please do subscribe now and click the bell icon so that you do not miss any of our new videos. Join me next Monday as I bring a new guest for a one-to-one -one conversation here in Cargo Masterminds presented by Cargo One. Until next Monday take good care of yourself and have a great week ahead thank you